Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be talking about cross-site request forgery. So today we're going to look at how to protect our site from cross-site request forgery. And to first do that we have to understand what CSRF actually is. So I'm going to link a computer file video in the description below that will explain it in further detail, but I'll try to give you a brief overview of what it is. The key word here is forgery. So imagine we are logged into our secure website in one tab, and on another tab we visit a malicious site. That malicious website can send a post request to our secure site to try to do something like delete the user's account. Now since we're logged in on the other tab, and there's actually a policy on the web that whenever you send a post request, you also send all of the cookies. When that malicious site sends the delete account request, it will check the cookies and see that we are logged in and actually go ahead and delete the account. So obviously this is really bad. You might be asking yourself though, how does this apply when a user is not logged in? Well, that's a very valid question and it doesn't apply quite as much, but what attackers can actually do is create a duplicate of your login form and then send that post request to your server. So it's always a good idea just to make sure that when you are sending post requests to your server, you want to try to verify that it's coming from your website and not somewhere else. So to do that, we're going to be using CSRF tokens, which is basically a long string of bytes that identifies that the post request is coming from your site. So last episode we created this registration form and this is what we're gonna be protecting today. And we'll be adding this CSRF protection to all the forms that we make in the future. So the first thing we wanna do is go over to our configuration file and you're gonna to wanna to set this CSRF token secret to something random. And then we're gonna hop over to our utils.php file and create functions called create token and validate token. So obviously create token is going to generate our CSRF token. And to do that, we're going to use a seed of eight random bytes. We're going to use the current time. And we're also going to use the session ID of the user. So basically we're making a token that is unique to each user, unique to every single second that a token could be made, and unique to every single token since we're using eight random bytes. And then we're going to combine that all together using a hash HMAC and we're going to use the SHA-256 algorithm to do this. So we're going to be hashing all of these values together, and this is where we're going to put in this CSRF token, because that is going to be the key that we use to hash our data. And that last parameter there just sets the output to be binary data. So remember, we're hashing the session ID, the seed, and the time. We're just going to concatenate that all together and hash it using SHA-256. Finally, we need to actually return our full token which is just going to be the hash combined with the time and the seed. And we need to keep this time and seed value so that we can actually verify the token later on. So we're just going to separate them with these little separator characters here so that we can get those values later. Then the very last step is to make sure that this value is safe to pass over a URL. So we're going to create our own URL safe encode function, which is basically going to be base64, but with a couple modifications to make it so that it is safe to pass over URL. So to do that, we're just going to use base64 encode, which is a built-in function in PHP. We'll encode the message, and then we want to replace some of the characters that would usually cause issues with the URL. So those characters are the plus and the slash. We're just going to replace those with a minus and an underscore. That way it doesn't cause any issues in the URL. And one other thing we're going to do is we're going to trim off all of the equal signs since sometimes base64 encode will pad the value with equal signs. And once we do that, we can create a URL safe decode function, which is just going to be the inverse of our encode function. So we're just going to flip the parameters in our string replacement function, and then we will call base64 decode on the entire thing. So now we can go ahead and validate our token. And to validate the token, we first need to get all of the different parts from the token, which of course we will pass in as a parameter. So we separate it into an array, and then we just want to make sure that that array has three elements, which is what we would expect. So we're just going to see if it is equal to three. If there's not three parts to our token, then we're going to return false. Now we can generate a hash. It's going to follow the exact same pattern as the create token, so I'm just going to copy that. And then we're going to replace seed with parts one, 
and time with parts two. Everything else is going to stay the same because we want to try to create an identical hash if the right values were passed. We also have to make sure that we decode our token before we separate it. And then what we can do is we can check if the hashes are equal using hash equals. So we're going to compare hash and part zero. And if they are equal, it means that a valid token was sent. Now we need to embed this somewhere where we can send it as something other than a cookie. And to do that, we're going to create a meta tag with the name of CSRF token and the value or the content is going to be our actual CS CSRF token that we generate. So we're just going to echo in our new token here using create token. And then if I refresh the page, you can see we just have to first include utils.php and then everything will look fine. I accidentally wrote out time instead of t here, so we'll just fix that. And now you can see we have our CSRF token plainly visible in our meta tag. So now we just need to send this CSRF token every time we send a post request. And to do that, we're going to just modify our current request function in JavaScript. The first thing we're going to do is check if there is a CSRF meta tag using a query selector. And then if that meta tag exists, we are going to just append that value to the data that we send over to our PHP script. So we're going to create a new variable called form data, and it's going to be equal to this entire thing that we had as that parameter to the send function, except instead of undefined, we're just going to pass an empty form data. And that way, what we can do is we can just append this CSRF tag to the form data before we send it. And so to do that, we're just going to see if our if our meta tag exists, we can get that content attribute, and we can actually append it to our form data using form data.append. Then of course we just need to set the parameter for xhr.send to form data. And with that, we can now send our CSRF token to every single PHP script that we send an Ajax request to. What we got to do next is we have to actually verify that token on the server side. So we're going to add a little error check into our registration code. We're going to go down in here and see if there were no errors with the input validation, then we want to validate the token. And that's one of the first things we want to do before we connect to our database or anything like that, because it's unnecessary to do that if the token is invalid. So we'll check if our CSRF token is set, then we'll check if it's a valid token. And if it is, we can carry on as usual. So we'll just wrap this entire thing in our if statement. And then we can create an else with a new error code. This is going to be error 9, which will just represent that an invalid CSRF token was sent to this PHP script. Finally, we have to go back to our JavaScript and actually set up this error code so that it will print something to the user if they send an invalid CSRF token. So now let's go ahead and test this out. Let's go over to our database and delete the user that we have in there right now. And then we can go ahead and create an account again. If I do it through our registration form here, we should have a valid CSRF token. So when we click sign up, it should create an account just like that. So everything worked fine. Our CSRF token was validated properly. And now let's see what happens if we send an invalid request or if we don't send that CSRF token, let's see what happens. So we'll go back and delete our user again. Go ahead and put in all of our credentials one more time. And then when we click sign up, you can see that it says that there is an invalid CSRF token. And so it did not create the account. So from now on, we're going to be adding this CSRF protection to every single post request that we send over to our server. And that is going to keep us safe from cross-site request forgery. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos in this series coming up. Next, we're going to be tackling how to validate the user's email by sending them an email and having them click on a link. So stay tuned for that. As always, thank you guys for watching. Bye.